In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called unique binary search trees. So given a an integer n, return a number of structurally, structurally unique binary search trees, which has exactly a number of nodes of unique values from 1 to n. So you can see here we have an example of n is equal to 3. So there are a total of five combinations or a total of five unique binary search trees that we can come up with, right? So you can see here that uh, all, the, all the trees contains a values between 1 to n and uh, you can see here that we can have 1 as the root and we have 3 2 or we have 2 3 when 1 is the root right if 2 is the root there's only one combination which is 1 and 3 right if 3 is the root then we have two combinations is 2 and 1 or 1 and 2 right so Again, binary search tree, basically we want to have all the values that are all smaller than the current node's value on the left and all the values that are bigger than the current node's value on the right side, right? So in this case, you can see there, there are basically a total of five combinations that we can come up with. But if n is equal to one, then there should be only one combination because let's say if we only have one node, then in this case, there's only one combination that we can come up with, right? Which is basically this node itself. So in this case, you can see that the constraint is one, uh, n is between 1 to 19. So in this case, to solve this problem, uh, what we can do is, is that we know that this uh, n right, is between uh, 1 to n, right? Because for all the trees that we, all the combinations that we can have in our binary search trees, the values should be between 1 to n. So let's say if we have a situation where n is equal to 3, right? So in this case, to solve this problem, just like any other dynamic, prog dynamic programming problem, uh, we know that this is a dy dynamic programming problem because we know that there's a sub-problem, right? And there's a sub-problem that we can be able to cache and be able to um, retrieve that pre-computed value so that we can avoid duplicate comp computation, right? So let me show you. So let's say, in this case, if I want to make one, no one as the root. So in this case, you can see here, there should be no nodes on the left side, right? There should be no nodes on the left side because there are no the one no one is the smallest. But there should be two nodes on the right because we have no two and no three. So if we have two nodes on the right, um, in this case, how many combinations can we come up with if we have two nodes? In this case, if we have two nodes, I can call a function, right? And I pass it in two as n to, to uh, retrieve how many nodes uh, or how many combinations that we can come up with if n is equal to 2, right? So if n is equal to 2, how many combinations can we come up with? In this case, we have 3 and uh, 2, right? Or we can also have 2 and a 3, like this, right? So you can see here we have two combinations that we can come up with if we have two nodes, right? Either 2 and 3 or 3 and either 2 and 3 or 3 and 2, right? So in this case, um, to, solve, to, to return that, what we have to do is we have to tell the parents say that if total, if n is equal to 2, then there are two combinations that we come up with, right? And in this case, if we only, uh, if there's total combination is equal to 0, then how many come up with, combinations can we come up with? We know that if there's 0, then there are basically no combinations at all. But the thing is that we want to figure out how many combinations can we come up with if we make the root no no one as the root, right? So if no one is the root, there are basically two combinations. But the thing is that how do we know that? Well, if there's zero nodes on the left side, right, how do we know there are two combinations that we can come up with? So if there's zero nodes on the left side, then that should be return us one. Right? Because what we can do is that we can say 1 times 2 is basically total 2 of combinations, right? Because let's just say, ignore that n is equal to 3 right now. Let's say we have like 3 nodes on the left, right? Let's say if we're passing in, uh, let's say we're passing in 3, right? We know that from this function that uh, n is equal to 3, then the output should be 5, right? So you can see here there are 5 combinations on the left and two combinations on the on the right. So how do we know how many combinations we can have? In this case, if I want to calculate, right, because you can see here, I can have this kind of combination, this kind of combination, right, different kind of binary search trees. 
So in this case, I can have two on the left, right? So I have to go for this combination with this combination, this combination with this combination, this combination with this combination, this combination with this, right? And this combination with that, this combination with that, right? So you can see here, we're basically just going to have uh, left total number of left combinations times total number of right combinations, right? So you can see there, if there's if there's five combinations on the left and two combinations on the right, then there are 10 combinations in total, right? So in this case, if we go back to the original example, right? In this case, if one combination, if there's zero nodes on the left, then there should be one combination so that I can use the left total of left combination. times total combinations that we have on the right, right? And this should give us two. And that should be total combinations if we make no one as the root. And now let's say we have still same thing, we make no two as the, the root. So I have no one on the left and no three on the right, right? Just like this image right here. So in this case, you can see here, I have one node on the left. So in this case, I call this function and I pass in one as the, as the number of nodes that we have, and I ha call this as well, right? We know that if there's only one node, then there's only one combination that we can come up with, right? So in this case, one times one is just one. So there's only one combination for this guy right here. And now let's go for, uh, in this case, we make node three as the, uh, as the root. So there are two nodes that we have on the left side, right? And then there should be zero node that we have on the right side. But the thing is, we already computed if we only have two nodes on the left, or if we only have two nodes, right, then we already compute that before, right? So what we can do is that we can probably save it onto the cache, and then we can be able to retrieve that, right? We know that if there's two nodes, on the, uh, if there's two nodes then total combination that we can come up with is basically two. Right, so we're returning back to the root, say there are two combinations. And if it's zero, we're basically returning one as, so that we can get the total combinations uh, for no three as the root, right? So in this case, we can see that there are a total of two, right? So this one has two, this one has one, and this one has two. So there, therefore, there are a total of five combinations that we can come up with, right? So in this case, you can see here, we have a top-down approach, right? This is the code for the top-down approach. And basically what I did here is I created an uh, create integer array with size of n plus one. And this cache array basically stores for each and every single element up to n, right? What's the number of, what's the total number of unique binary search trees that it can come up with, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna call this DFS function. We want to, this DFS function should return us how many unique binary search trees for this element, right? For n, right? So what we do is here is we do our base case, right? Because we're using recursion. So this the base case is that if n is less than two, right? If it's one, if it's zero, then we should return us one, right? So it should return us there's only one combination. So then what we do is we check to see if the current position is already pre uh, is already computed before. If it's already computed, we will return the pre-computed result. If not, we will compute it here. So we have a total, right? And then what we do is that we're going to iterate through. So if current num is equal to one, right? We're going to go from we're going to go from one to n. We're going to say if current num is the root, how many combinations that we can come up with, right? Up to n. So you can see here if I want to know how many combinations that we can come up with if n is equal to three and current num is one. So in this case, how many nodes do we have on the left? In this case, it's gonna be the current num minus one, right? In, in this case, zero. So we try to find how many total BSTs, uh, total unique combinations, if we have zero nodes, and this will sure return us one. And then we try to calculate how many nodes do we have on the right? In this case, it's gonna be n minus the current num, right? n is basically three, and then minus one, which is basically two. So there are two nodes on the left, uh, two nodes on the right. So we're basically just going to compute that and it should return us two. So then we have one times two, which is basically two. And total is basically total plus zero plus two, right? And then for our next iteration, you can see here we have current num is two. So two 
2 minus 1 is basically 1, so we have one node on the left. And if we only have one node, then there should be one combination on the left. And then we, we're going to calculate how many nodes that we have on the right. In this case, it's going to be 3 minus 2. There should be only one node. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to calculate how many nodes we have or how many combinations we can come up with if we only have one node, right? So at, as a result, you can see total in total, we should have 1 times 1, which is just 1. So there's only one combination. So we're going to say total right now is 2. 2 plus 1 is basically 3, right? And then for our last uh, iteration, we have 3. So 3, in this case, we should have two nodes on the left. So in this case, if we have two nodes, then we're going down this DFS function, right? And then we know that 2 is already compute that before, right? So we're going to retrieve that. And then it should, it should say 2, right? So that we don't have to compute that be, uh, again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say n minus current num, which is basically 0, right? There's 0 nodes on the right. So we're going to compute how many nodes that we have. In this case, it should be 1. So 1 times or 2 times 1 is basically 2. So in this case, 3 plus 2 is basically 5, right? We, we save it in our cache, and then we return that as the result, right? So you can see here, this is our top-down approach. And now let's take a look at the bottom-up approach. So the bottom-up approach, basically what we're doing here is that uh, we're basically doing the same thing, right? We have a cache integer array and size of n plus 1. And then the first two elements in this case is going to be 1, right? If we have zero nodes, we're just going to say there's only one combination. If there's only one node, we have we make it as one combination as well. So we're going to start from 2. So in this case, uh, if n is equal to 3, so in this case, what we're going to do is that for each and every single current n, right? We basically have to iterate through from 1 to n to calculate the total unique combinations that we can come up with for each and every single num, right? So for num, if I make num as the root, how many combinations do we have? If we make 2 as the, com uh, the root, how many combinations do we have? If we make 3 as the root, how many combinations do we have up to current n, right? And then we're going to get our total and then we're going to save it in our cache and then at the end what we do in here is that uh, we re basically return the last element that we have right in our cache so as you can see here basically time complexity uh, is going to be n squared